Hello, everybody. It's been a couple of weeks since I've done a video, and I'm going to do a video on the bifiller coil and the um, magnetic to scalar switch. And it might turn into a couple of videos, but we'll start out and see how it goes with this first part. All right, so here's the bifiller coil. It has two windings. It has two windings in the same coil. Uh, hence, they call it bifiller. Um, there's a white version and a blue version. It's just the cover wrapping. Um, it has no other significance. There's a couple of coils to my right. Yeah, these are a couple of white versions of this. This is, a, this is an old... Um, uh, it's a smaller coil. It, it's got its uses, too. Um, it's not quite as big. doesn't have as many wraps as these do. But at any rate, let's get on to describing a couple of the connectors. This cable here is to the 18-gauge wire that's in this coil. This cable with the cord already connected is to the 12-gauge wire. The plug on this was designed to work with the PEMF, uh, the high-powered PEMF, and it was capable of, that is capable of generating 160 volts, pulses into this coil in excess of 100 amps, but they're nano uh, or micro, my, uh, they're micro uh, uh, pulses in duration. But it sets up a very powerful magnetic pulse um, that can be measured with um, this meter, this meter here, my triflex meter, clear, clear across the room. So uh, you can look up PEMF if you want to know how a PEMF works and what it's all about. There are several types. There's low-powered and there's high-powered. This was intended to be a coil for the high-powered PEMF. But I'm not going to demonstrate PEMF technology in this video. I'm going to demonstrate um, running it off the spooky, which I have right here. And I'm going to demonstrate uh, magnetic wave and um, scalar wave and what they are all about and how they're generated. And so here we go. Um, in order to plug both coils from this right here into the Spooky, I need an adapter cable, two of them. I need to convert this plug right here into a BNC that will work with the Spooky. Well, I have an adapter here that's designed to convert this plug into an RCA phono. And then I have these adapters. Oh, I've got about a lot of them. Excuse me for reaching in front. And then I have these adapters that convert to a, uh, oh, get it in here, convert it into a uh, BNC. I've already got one mounted on here on the Spooky. So I'm going to plug in channel one, channel one into the Spooky channel one. I call it channel one. I'm calling it the major wrap, the 12 gauge wrap. It's not really a channel, it's a, a wrap, uh, a, a wire um, wrap. And the major one, the big, the big wire, the 12 gauge wire is going into channel one here. By the way, it's not, doesn't make a lot of difference when you're using this coil with the spooky, which one you plug into. I'm just setting my own protocol or my own convention, I guess. Now I have a plug for the secondary winding. And the reason why it's plugged is that when you use this coil as a PEMF, you don't need this at all, so there's no sense dangling a big wire off of it. But I made an adapter for this plug right here. Plugs in. And on the other end, is another RCA phono, which, what do you think, plugs into a converter um, RCA to BNC, and hence now I have a way of plugging in channel 2. So this coil now has one winding going to channel 1 and one winding going to channel 2. I need to use a scope to give you visuals so you can see exactly what's cooking. So I actually have these pigtails off the spooky so I can monitor the signal that goes into the coil 
uh, with my oscilloscope. And I'm going to use sine waves, but you can use square waves and triangular waves just as well. I just connect up channel 1, and now I'm connecting up channel 2. Okay. All right, I'm back. I fixed that broken wire, and I have channel 2 connected to channel 2 of the spooky, channel 1 connected to channel 1 of the spooky, and you can visually see uh, two wave patterns. I've offset them slightly. Let's offset them a little bit more. The red is channel 1, and the yellow is channel 2. Now I'm going to place them on top of one another to show how identical they are, and I'll continue on with this presentation. All right, when two waves of identical everything, frequency, size, voltage, whatever, um, are added together, they will sum up and make a wave that's twice as big um, as the original, uh, either one of the original waves that are being added together. And there's two ways to demonstrate that. One way is to use a spooky boost, which I'll be doing a little bit later. And another way is to create a receiving coil, which I have right here. Put it in the center of the big by filler coil and connect up a scope to it. I don't have a three channel scope, so I have to disconnect one of my channels. So I'm going to connect this up and I'm going to demonstrate the addition of two waves, how they actually add. Then I'm going to demonstrate a scalar wave. Um, so I'm going to pause and I'll be right back. All right. I connected channel one of the scope to the coil that I'm holding in my hand. And as you can see, it's receiving a signal from the bifolar coil that is receiving signals from the spooky, spooky channel one and channel two, and they're going into the bifolar coil and they're radiating a signal that I'm sensing with the secondary coil here. And on the screen, you can see what looks like this just one channel we were looking at earlier, but really that's a summation of two identical wave patterns going into this coil. And if I turn the switch, give it a little more amplitude there. If I turn the switch to turn off channel two, that wave pattern, that summation, will reduce substantially. And there you go. So now I have just one wave pattern coming from channel one into the coil. And it is um, being sensed with this receiving coil. And I have a scope monitoring it. And if I send a second wave, uh, frequency, same frequency, same amplitude, same everything, to the coil on the bifilar winding here, that signal will double. And I just did it. I pressed the channel 2 on, and that signal doubled. All right, so now that is the summation of two identical waves coming out of channel 1, channel 2, going into coil 1, coil 2, and the bifiller, and how they sum up. So you can get a much stronger uh, wave pattern. If I have each wave at 20 volts, now I have a wave at 40 volts, or close to 40 volts. There is some loss, and the coupling isn't perfect in this uh, test, but regardless... So that is one technique for doubling the output of the Spooky. And by the way, that's what your Spooky Boost does. Your Spooky Boost turns around and adds the two wave patterns. Or if you use inverse sync, um, puts them out 180 degrees out of phase. And it combines them into one. I, I can demonstrate that, and I will, uh, a little bit later when I start giving a presentation on the switch. Before I go anywhere else, and the last part of this uh, video will be to show you a scalar wave. Now, what is a scalar wave? A scalar wave is taking two identical signals, and I'll reduce this back, and I'll turn on channel 2, and I'm going to have to disconnect the scope from the coil, which I just did, connect it back to channel 1, so you can see what I'm talking about. 
turn on channel two so we can see them both. I played around with the amplitudes. We're going to get the amplitudes so they're similar. There we go. Offset one so you can see them. Okay, so there's two waves identical. And I'm going to put one of these, channel two in this case, 180 degrees out of phase. And I'm going to generate a scalar wave coming out of this coil. And I'll talk a little bit more, try to explain what I'm talking about. Um, first thing I have to do is go to channel two and um, go to phase and then invert. And there we go. And let's match them up because they got them all set. So they both look uh, all right. So I, 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 I set the spooky up. I preset it up. You have to go a couple of levels deep into the menu if you're going to do it manually. But your software, your spooky software, will do invert sync automatically. You know how to do that. So when you run the by filler from a protocol through the software coming off your computer into the spooky, you can generate that kind of wave pattern. Um, I'm doing it manually by just knowing the controls on the uh, spooky. So now I have two wave patterns, and they are identical in all respects except one. They are 180 degrees out of phase. Now, what do you think is going to happen when I add those two together? What I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a visual by reconnecting the coil and, and let the coil show you what it's seeing. And I'm going to state that if you add two identical wave patterns together, they will cancel one another out, and they create what they call a standing wave. And that's where the nodal points, right where I'm pointing, right where that junction is, that junction, that junction is, they both meet. And between the nodal points, it, you'll see a straight line. The waves cancel. But there is current going out through the, the coil from each one. So there is energy actually still being produced. That energy is a scalar wave. And this is the principle that your re spooky remote works on. Um, it, it inverts a wave pattern halfway down the line or combines two wave patterns to um, like I'm doing here in the coil. And it inverts one of them and makes them out of phase, creates what they call a standing wave. Hence, that is the uh, beginning of a scalar wave. Yes, you can put your fingernail clipping in the middle of the coil and so forth, just like you were using a super-duper huge remote. All right, so now I have to actually show you the summation as this coil receives. Them. So I'm going to, again, I'm going to do this live. I'm just going to play and disconnect the channel 1. I'm going to turn off channel 2 so it doesn't flicker on us. I'm going to connect channel 1 to the receiving coil and channel ground to ground and there you go you're saying whoa I don't see anything I see a straight line yeah you're right I just showed you how two waves added together that are 180 degrees out of phase cancel one another um, I believe if I press the zero there we go give it a little more amplitude I just put them in phase and they summed up. I put them out of phase, and they cancel. But they only cancel here. There are still two waves coming out of the spooky. There is energy coming out of the spooky going into this coil. But in the air waves, you don't see that energy, but it's there. It's your scalar wave. All right, so that might be a little bit of an enlightenment how uh, they mechanically uh, create, because this is a mechanical device, a couple of coils, uh, very physical, how they mechanically create a um, standing wave, which is the foundation for a scalar wave. All right, so that'll be the end of this video. I'm going to next do a second video and show you how the scalar switch works and how it actually makes life a little bit easier doing all this, either manually or with the software.